In this video, we're going to take a look at how the element selection tool can be used to get different types of information from civil data. Before we begin, let's start off by turning off some of the reference files so that we can just take a look at some of the geometry that we have in this particular design file. So I'm going to navigate up to the Home tab, go over to the Primary Ribbon Group, go to the Attach Tools, and select References. Here you will see all the reference files that are attached. Select the uh, Corridor SR97, and then press Shift on your keyboard to select the last reference file there, the Corridor-Bridge.DGN. Once those files have been selected, go ahead and toggle those off using the display button here. That will turn off those corridors and the existing ground terrain. Once you're done, you can simply close the reference file dialog box. And we're ready to take a closer look at the geometry that's stored in this file. So the element selection tool can be found on all the ribbon tabs with inside of this particular Open Roads modeling workflow. If you click on each tab, you'll see the element selection tool appears in each of the tabs. And this tool is used quite a bit to select elements as well as get information about the civil data that's inside the file. So let's take a look at how we use the element selection tool. So let's left click on the London Road alignment. The London Road alignment is the alignment here that runs from south to north. So let's go ahead and select that. You can see immediately we get some feedback we get the distances and directions, we get the stationing, and some other information. On the lower left-hand portion of the screen, you also see that you're being prompted to identify element to add to set. You also see that this particular element is called London Road. And over here on the right-hand portion of the screen, you see how many elements were selected. So when the element is selected, it will highlight in the view. And any element that's selected is considered to be a selection set. Now notice in the status bar, the active selection set indicator reflects how many elements are in the current selection set. In this case, it's just one. The status bar also features a prompt on the lower left side of the uh, status bar here that lets you know the current tool and what to do next. In this example, the active tool is element selection. The prompt is to identify element to add to the set. If we want to add some more elements to this set, all we have to simply do is come up to the element selection tool, select the add button, and we can select another graphic or another alignment. In this case, let's go ahead and select the SR97 extension, select that, and that will be added to the selection set. Now we have two elements selected here. If we want to clear the selection set, all we have to do is simply come up to the clear button here, select that, and it'll clear the selection. If we want to select all the elements in the file, all we have to do is select the Select All button, and that will select all the elements in the file and put them in a selection set. So you can see down here we have 12 elements that have been selected in the selection set. To clear the elements, all we have to do is go back to the Clear Elements button, and that will clear the elements. And once you're done, you can set this back to individual mode. Some other tips about the element selection tools when it's active. The Tool Settings dialog has options for the selection method. So you have a method for doing individual, block, shape, circle, and line. In the bottom row of the element selection tool, we have options to add new elements. We have option to add, subtract, invert, and select all, as well as clear. Extended settings can be accessed via the drop-down arrow to select elements by microstation attributes like level, color, and line style. So by selecting the drop-down arrow here, we have options for those other microstation type of elements. Multiple elements can be selected by a window selection by dragging the cursor from left to right inside the window or right to left for inside and overlapping the window. The control key can be pressed to add or remove elements from the selection set. So for example, if I press down my left mouse button and I just drag my cursor across my graphics, you can see it selects all those. If I left click into my view, it will deselect the elements. So that's the basics of how the element selection tool works. Now that we understand how the element selection tool works, let's talk about how we can use it to gather some information from civil geometry that's stored in our design file. 
When you're working with the software, all civil data is stored and managed in the design file. Now, a major component of the civil data is the feature definition, which controls the name and the symbology of civil elements. A civil element is known as a feature, and a primary property of the feature is the feature definition. When you hover your cursor over civil data in the DGN file, a tooltip with important information about the feature will be displayed. It will display the feature name, the feature type, the feature definition, the level, etc. So let's take a look at how we can use the element selection tool to view information about some geometry that's stored in this particular design file. So let's go back to the element selection tool, make it active, make sure the mode is set to individual and to new. And then once again, let's go over in the 2D view here. Let's go and hover our cursor over the London Road alignment. So move your cursor over to the alignment and just leave it there for a second. And notice the tooltip that pops up. It tells you this is a complex element called London Road and it has a feature definition called Geom Baseline. It also has an active profile called London Road and the level is Geom Centerline. So you can see this is some important information about this particular element. So you can see just by hovering your cursor over an element will give you some very basic information about that particular piece of geometry. Now what if we want to see some more detailed information or we want to make some changes to this particular element? All we have to do is simply left click on it. Here and now you will see the bearings and distances. You also see the beginning station as well as some editable text and element manipulators. The element manipulators display as circles and arrows and they allow you to move, rotate, trim, and extend geometric elements as needed. Let's take a closer look. To deselect the alignment, simply left click anywhere in empty space. And let's zoom into this ramp B area here. Take a closer look at some of the geometry relationships. So let's go ahead and select ramp B. You can see here that this particular ramp has a radius of 2810. And this is editable text, so simply clicking on the text will allow you to make changes to the radius. Also, if we zoom in closer to the beginning of the alignment, with the alignment still selected, you'll see the drag handle arrows, which will allow us to trim, extend, move, and rotate this particular element. So take a moment to review some of the editable text and the element manipulators. Once you're done, simply zoom out to review the rest of the alignments. Now let's take a look at adjusting the size and the color of the manipulators. So you may have noticed when you selected an alignment that all of the text shows up in orange and the circles and the arrows aren't very large. You can see they're rather small and you have to zoom in pretty close to, uh, to see them and to grab onto them. Now we can adjust the size of the manipulators as well as the color of the dynamic text in the manipulators by simply going into the backstage view under the user preferences. Let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to navigate up to the backstage view by clicking on the file tab. I'm going to scroll down to settings, select settings. Under settings user, go down to the preferences, and then down at the bottom of the screen here, the preferences dialog will show up. Select view option civil. And you'll see here you have a manipulator panel. Simply expand it if it's not expanded. You can expand the group by pressing on the arrow. You can see here the default manipulator size is 10. We're going to go ahead and change that to 20, so we're going to double the size. And then to adjust the color, just go over to the normal color over here, select that row. Then from the drop down list, you can select a color from the color table here. I'm going to go ahead and select this magenta color here. That's a value of 255, 0, 255. I also want to adjust the font type, so I'm going to come over here to the manipulator font and I'm going to change this to Tahoma. So I'm going to scroll down the list. So we find Tahoma font and select that and then click OK and then press the arrow in the upper left portion of the screen to return back to the main view. Now you can see the arrows are quite larger now and the colors have been changed. So you can see it's very easy to make adjustments to the manipulators as needed. Now let's take a look at adjusting the accuracy of the geometry that you see. So you can see the linear distances are displayed with four decimal places. You can also see that the bearings uh, are displayed out to two decimal places. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments to that. 
So to adjust that, we need to go back to the backstage view. So I'm going to select the file tab. I'm going to go down to settings. I'm going to go over to the user settings here. I'm going to select file, design file settings, and then scroll down to the working units. And over here, we're going to go and set the accuracy of the working units for the linear units to be two decimal places. And this will affect the display of the linear geometry that you see in the file. So now when we change this to two, when we go back to the file, you'll have an accuracy of two decimal places. For the angle readout, we're going to adjust the angle readout here so that it displays to zero decimal places for the bearings. So we're going to set that to zero. And then for civil formatting, we're going to take a look at that real quick. And you can see here the station formatting is set as SS plus SS dot SS. You can see the precision there is set to three decimal places. Let's go ahead and set that to two. And once you do that, we can go ahead and click OK. That will save our settings there and return back to the main view. And now let's go ahead and reselect that line. Now you can see the bearing is now zero decimal places. The distance is now two decimal places. Now, one thing you may have noticed is some of the text appears magenta, some of it appears gray. Any text that you see gray, that just means it's read-only text. It's not directly editable. Any text that appears in the color means it is directly editable, which means you can just click on it and change it directly. The next thing I want to talk about is the Civil Context menu. I'll note if you select a element, for example, we'll select this alignment again. If you hover your cursor there for a few seconds, you'll notice you have a Civil context menu that appears, it gives you access to some other tools. Important things like properties, open profile model, create corridor, speed table, apply linear template, rules, match feature definition, horizontal geometry report, add surface to profile, zoom to, and delete. So this is a handy tool. This works on all the civil objects inside of the software. All you have to do is select an object, Hover your cursor there for a few seconds, and the Civil Context menu will appear, giving you direct, easy access to the tools. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the properties for the State Route 97 alignment. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. State Route 97 alignment is this alignment right here, so I'm going to select that. Now I'm going to the properties. You can see here, it displays the name and the feature definition that's used for this particular alignment. Let's change that name to get rid of the extension and just call it Route 97. And then left click in the view to accept that. Then if you hover your cursor over that particular alignment, you'll see the name has now been changed. The last thing I want to talk about is the on-screen heads up props. You may have noticed all the civil tools that we've been using so far display on-screen heads up prompts and these are used to accept inputs needed to create each element or object and dynamic feedback is displayed while you're creating elements. So let's take a look at the on-screen heads up prompts. I'm going to use the geometry tools as an example so I'm going to navigate over to the geometry tab, go to the horizontal ribbon group, go to the lines category and select line between points. And notice the toolbox comes up for the tool. You also have a heads up prompt attached to your cursor. Now before we begin we want to make sure we set our feature definition so we have the proper name and color that will be used for this particular line that we're creating. So I'm going to come in here and select Geom Baseline. We'll use the default name. And now we're going to follow the prompts attached to our cursor. So you can see it says Enter Start Point. So all we have to do is left click anywhere in View 1 and we get the first point placed there. And then now to the next prompt, the prompt changes and it says Enter End Point. So Notice we can also key in a distance. So I'm going to go ahead and key in 500 and press enter on my keyboard. Anytime you press enter, that will lock in the value that's keyed into the input field. Also notice the left and right arrows. The left and right arrows are used to toggle between other input fields. So if I'm going to use the right arrow key to navigate over to the line direction so that I can set a bearing, then I'm going to key in bearing of north 75 degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds east. And we can do that just by simply keying in north 75 colon 00 colon 00 colon east and press enter on the keyboard and that will lock in that value and then just left click to accept to complete the command. So it's very useful heads up information at your fingertips. 
Other important information when you're working with the on-screen prompts. Enter or tab is used to lock values. End is used to unlock values. The left and right arrow keys are used to navigate to other fields inside of the Heads Up Prompt dialog. And the Escape key can be used to exit out of a tool or completely exit out of a command. You can also do a right click or a reset to cancel a command as well. And a left click is used to advance to the next on-screen prompt in most tools. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.